my very first video. I'm not the type to put myself on screen too much, so bear with me, I will have to get the hang of this. So a few of you have been asking me about my um, techniques for drawing on Procreate and just how I sort of do my illustrations. So I thought that I would create my very first YouTube video, sort of going through my process. This process is going to be pretty um, quick and I'm just sort of going to rush through it because I'm not quite sure what parts you guys are interested in learning about and this will just kind of get it all out there and then you guys can comment and let me know where you want me to focus on or go back and sort of slow down and explain. But for this video, we're basically going to go through and take a digital stamp from my stamp collection, which is a brand new one actually. You'll be able to purchase this um, as this video is being released. And you'll be able to take this stamp, bring it to Procreate, and learn how to color it in. Hello everyone, thanks for watching. We are going to learn how to color a digital stamp in Procreate today. This little image is now available in my shop and if you're interested in it, please go ahead and download it so that you can follow along with this tutorial. First step is to open up your Procreate program and load this image in. It'll be on a layer on its own and what I need you to do is create a second layer so that you can do sort of a coloring layer underneath the original image layer. So if you saw there, I just dragged it underneath so that I could um, have my own color layer. I'm going into the brushes now. In the inking section, there is a dry ink brush that I absolutely love and use for all my base coloring. So if you want to follow along and use the same brush, that's great. It has a really nice texture, a little bit gritty, a little bit unfinished, and it's perfect for my style. So. I always tend to use that one for my base layer. I'm showing you here some of the palettes I've created over time for my images. I have a sort of style, look lighter pastel colors that I love for my art, but you need to create your own style and your own palettes because they won't be there when you get started. So you can go through these different options below and sort of play around with it and create your own favorite color palettes so that you have quick access to those colors or you can just access the colors from here and so to just have fun and, and just pick whatever you want as you go along. So what I'm doing here is choosing a color for the little boy's skin. Um, I just chose a skin color that I have in, stored in my palette and again using my dry ink brush. I've um, adjusted just if you see on the left side there, there's two sort of um, adjustment settings. The top one is just the size of your brush. So I just adjusted that to be fairly large for my base coloring, just so that it's a bit quicker to color in. And then you, when you're doing finer details or highlighting, you can sort of make the brush a little bit smaller if necessary. So I'm looking for a hair color now and I'm gonna test out a little bit of yellow. Not loving it. So I double tap on the screen, that undoes my last step, which is really easy and, and fun. So I can just quickly test a color out, not fan, just undo it. So I'm going ahead here with the brown and I'm just adjusting the size of the pen to make sure that I can get in those little spots without going too much over the lines. And I'm just gonna finish coloring out my base layer here with continuing the whole base layer with the dry ink brush and just making sure I stay on the bottom layer of below the, the black um, image layer so that all the color is below that and therefore you don't have to worry about coloring in the lines or anything, it's just all below that layer. So I'll go through and um, finish off coloring all the base color.
off sort of the character and the little bird, I'm just thinking that um, I'm going to be needing to add some background colors. And one thing that's really nice, um, if you want, is to create some additional layers to go below your color layer um, if you want to do background coloring, because that way you don't need to worry about coloring around what you've just colored. It'll all go behind that. So the lovely thing about layers is you can always kind of put more things behind. So um, that's what I'm doing here, creating additional layers, just so I can do the background without worrying about tiptoeing around the coloring that I've already done. What I'm doing here is um, creating a new layer now, which is above my color base layer, but below my stamp black outline layer. So in this layer, we're going to be working on highlights and shadows. So what I'm testing out here with the side um, settings is a good brush size and a good brush opacity to work with highlights. So as we discussed earlier, the top setting on the left is for the brush size, but the bottom one is for the brush opacity, which is sort of the transparency of the brush. So if it's on full, you'll have a full color. Whereas if you drag it down, you can have the color see through a little bit. So there's a bit of transparency and you can adjust depending on what you're looking for. So when I'm doing my highlights, I put it quite low. So it's really just a very faint white that I'm, I'm coloring. So I've chosen just a pure white and I've brought the opacity quite low down. And again, just doing all this highlight on a layer above my color layer. And what I'll end up doing next is picking a color to do the shadows. So um, I'm picking that dark green and again adjusting my opacity so that it's quite low. So it's just giving sort of a tint of, of dark, a tint of sh shading that will um, sort of bring dimension and bring my character to life. Just selecting um, a yellow so again on the same layer where I've done my highlights and shadows is having a tint of yellow so again the opacity is quite low so you can really see through the brush but it's sort of blending in the highlights and the shadows and bringing some warmth so it could be sunlight or moon glow which is sort of a bit of warmth and, and sort of blending in the shading a little bit with them um, again bringing the character to life and bringing a bit of dimension I've just selected um, a white brush to do some fine highlighting. So it's a bit of a, a thinner brush and I'm just going to go down the pole and on a shirt in different places where I can just sort of pop out some highlights and bring up again a bit of uh, dimension and a bit of movement and interest to the, the picture. So going through just and adding those, those white lines and um, adjusting the opacity depending on what I want to do. Here I am doing a few swirls now. I love the whimsy and the fun and the movement that you can get from um, just adding a few little swirls and dots and bits and pieces. So this is one of my favorite parts of, of the drawing is when you can just add a little bit of fun and, and you know, little, little decorations here and there to bring it to life. One thing you might be noticing while I'm drawing as well is that I'm holding my finger down on the screen and a circle will pop up and that's a color selector. So if I want to select a color that I've previously used in my illustration, I can um, hold on on top of that color and it will select it again. So it's a quick way, instead of having to go back to my palette, it's a quick way to, to re-access a color that I already used in my drawing. So just a quick little tip. Another thing that I love to do and that really individualizes the illustration is adding little bits and pieces around like stars or hearts or swirls or any little extra drawings that are not with the black light outline. They are used like, like sort of look like colored pencil really, just sort of like little sketchy bits that you could do yourself when you um, print out the illustration on paper and you want to color it or if you're doing it in Procreate. You can add your own little special touches and you can add patterns to the shirt or add swirls in the hair or add a little background image, anything you want. Because the style is very loose and sketchy, it's, it's not too hard to add little bits and pieces that um, kind of make the, 
the drawing and the illustration your own. is my final piece for you. I hope you've learned a little bit and enjoyed watching. Now you just need to print it out and get crafting.